Let's try to find limits by factoring binomials. Okay, here are a few examples. Now you'll notice, let's do the first one. It says limit of this function when x approaches 7, the function is x squared minus 49 divided by x minus 7. Now here, if I substitute 7 here, right, so what do I get? If I substitute 7, I get 7 squared minus 49 over 7 minus 7, which gives me 49 minus 49 and 0 over 0, right? 7 minus 7 is also 0. So that 0 over 0 is meaningless, right? It has got no meaning. It's absurd value, right? So a limit you cannot find by just substitution. Now, so we have to use some other technique. Well, getting 0 also indicates one thing to you. If you remember your polynomial functions, that is that 7 is a part of a factor, right? So x minus 7 is a factor of both numerator and denominator. And that is why you're getting 0 in numerator also, right? Here you can see x minus 7, right? So, so we have a common factor. So this method doesn't apply. If you get this, then you can't find limit by substituting, right? So here what we do is, so here what we do is we try to factor it. Now let's go back. Let's go from here to here, right? So to factor this, we get limit x approaches 7 and a square minus b square is the technique, difference of squares. So we know it's product and sum, right? So we can write this as 7, oh, I'm writing 7, x square minus 7, oh, x minus 7 times x plus 7, right? Over x minus 7, correct? So, x squared minus 49 can be written as x minus 7 times x plus 7 divided by x minus 7. Here, these two are common factors. They can be cancelled out, right? And so, we are left with limit x approaches 7 is equals to x plus 7, right? Now, and you know, of course, when we are talking about limit, that means we are approaching 7. x is not equal to 7, right? Now, when we are approaching very, very close to 7, we can now find the limit by substituting 7, right? If I substitute 7 here, what do I get? 7 plus 7 is 14. So we get limit as 7 plus 7, which is equal to 14. So limit of this function is 14. And how did we find it? We found it by factoring the numerator and then cancelling out the same common factors in both numerator and denominator, correct? And then simplified our expression, getting the result, x plus 7. And now we can substitute x equals to 7 and get our answer. So this is a very effective technique, and especially when you get 0 over 0 by substitution, it could be employed, okay? And let's look into this example. If I substitute 4 here, I get square root of 2. Uh, square root of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. And here also, if I substitute 4, I get 4 minus 4, which is 0. So we get, again get 0 over 0. So whenever you get 0 over 0, then we can apply this technique of factoring both numerator and denominator, right? Now here, how can you factor this? So let's see how we can do this one, right? Now here we can think square root x square. We can think x as square root x square. Do you understand? And then we have difference of squares. So let me show you here. So we have numerator as square root x minus 2 divided by, this could be written as square root x minus 2 times square root x plus 2. Do you see that? If you multiply this, square root x times square root x will give you x, right? And minus 2 times 2 will give you minus 4. And if you multiply these two terms, 2 square root x and minus 2 square root x, they will be 0. So you get this. So, you know, this is difference of squares, which could be written as sum and product of the numbers, factors, correct? And now you can cancel out the common factors. The factors which are common in both numerator and denominator, correct? And once you do that, you can write this as limit x approaches 4 
and we have 1 over square root of x plus 2 and if I substitute 4 here I get what? I get 1 over 4 square root 2 which is 1 over 4 right? So the square root of 4 is 2 and 2 plus 2 is 4. So limit of this function you can find by factory. Okay? So this is what I'm trying to explain here. Let's do another one. And this time it's a cubic function, right? Do you remember a cube minus b cube formula? It's kind of important to know it, right? So a cube minus b cube is a minus b times a square plus a b plus b square, okay? So that's the formula for a cube minus b cube. So we are going to factor it using this formula, okay? So let's go ahead. So let's limit x approaches 3 and x cube minus 3 cube. 27 could be written as 3 cube, right? So we can write this as x minus 3 times x square plus 3x plus 3 square, which is 9, okay? divided by 3 minus x. Okay? You see 3 minus x and x minus 3 are related by minus 1. If I do minus 1 times this, then you get 3 minus x. So they can be cancelled out, right? So they are common factors, but you get minus 1 this time, not plus 1. Okay? So this could be written as limit x approaches 3 and you have x square plus 3x plus 9 over 1. Is that okay? Because they cancelled out. But this one is minus 1. Correct? So that's what you get. And now it is not 0 over 0 form. Earlier if you would have substituted 3 here. So 3 cube is 27. 27 minus 27 is 0. And 3 minus 3 is also 0. So this was of the form of 0 over 0. Correct? Therefore we resort to factoring and once we factor we cancel out the terms which were making it zero in both numerator and denominator and now we can substitute correct and then if you plug in three you, what do you get you get three square is nine right plus three times three is nine plus nine so what do you get here is that this is equal to let me write here this is equals to 27 okay so, limit of this function is 27, correct? So, I hope you understand whenever we get 0 over 0 condition, then it's a good idea to factor numerator and denominator and cancel out the factors which are making them 0, right? And then substitute the limit value and get your answer. Always remember, Whenever we say x approaches 3, it means that x is not equal to 3. It is very, very close to 3, okay? So, that's kind of important thing which you should always remember. I hope you understand this technique of factoring and you can employ it now very effectively to solve your problems. Thank you.